in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Write this down. Write it down. You like writing things down. Write them down. It's like a like a personal contract with ourselves. Welcome in Purple Daily, the only show in America that actually has the stones and the stupidity to keep track of our predictions every single week with statistics. This show is presented by our friends at TCL, one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands. They have a new lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution, all at an affordable cost. Learn more at TCL.com and inspire greatness with TCL. I took a screenshot of my TCL TV this morning, boys, and put it out on nice. Twitter. I'm not sure if you saw this, but uh, our friends on ESPN, so oh, get up. God was running amok without Mike Greenberg this morning. Oh, no, so, no greenie. Alan Hahn, who is a New York media personality, listed mm-hmm. the top five franchises that need to win a title. Ugh. The top five teams that have to win a title. The fan <laughs> yeah. bases are crawling through the desert, star for championships. <laughs> so I think I, I will say number five is, is sort of fair. Toronto Maple Leafs. He's got Toronto as number, but didn't Toronto win a bunch of Stanley Cups like way back in the day? Don't they have yeah, like they, ten Stanley Cups? I'm not sure what their total is. Their last one came the last time they were in the finals was '67. Okay, that's fair. The New York Mets are number four on this list. That's no. They won one in '86. So no, they yeah oh, no, no they don't. Uh uh-uh. uh. The Dallas Cowboys are number three. They gotta win a championship. Oh okay, my god! What are we gonna do if our that, team? Complete BS. They just had a dynasty in the 90s, yeah. for God's sakes. And another one in the 70s. Yep. The New York Knicks, number two. That's been 50 years. I actually don't I, hate that one. Yep. Toronto and the Knicks are fair. And then the New York Jets. But the Jets have a Super Bowl. The Jets have a Super Bowl. That's, by the way, if you're counting at home, that's three New York teams. That's the just gonna, I was just going <laughs> to ask what the what the ratio was. I'm surprised they didn't include the Lakers. My God, they haven't won one in a few oh, years. God. LeBron. Well, the, I mean, the Yankees. Yeah, it's been, oh, God, we haven't won one since 2009. Yeah. We only have 28 of them or whatever. What are we going to do? So, okay. That's great. That East Coast biased on my TCL yep. TV this morning. <laughs> Dex, let's hit the music. Right. Most make predictions and then never admit they're wrong. Yeah, that's not Mackie and Judd. This is the place where we just totally own our horrible predictions. Write this down. And eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Write that down. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. Here's how it works. Three predictions from everybody each week. They must be Vikings or football related and quantifiable or show related. You can make a prediction about the show if you want to. We keep track of completion percentage and touchdowns and listeners. If you want to be like Justin in Rochester, one of our OG listeners of the old radio show back in the day, you can send us a message through the score North app, send it to Declan. There's a feedback tab and we'll get you scheduled for some time here in the coming weeks and months. So the accountability sessions are a little light this time of year because, you know, there's nothing really happening in the football world. That's why we're doing historical pie charts this week. We got another one on the way tomorrow. We got more for the 4th of July weekend. Old Mackadak just finished watching the 1998 NFC Championship game last night. It's the first time I've watched that full game back since I was like 12 years old. And oh, really? You I, want, and it. I want to punch somebody. Yeah, yeah I've, I've rewatched it before. I think I watched during COVID. And it was, uh, uh-huh. yeah, pretty, pretty frustrating. I mean, I've seen like huge chunks of it on NFL Network and stuff, but I've never just sat down and said, I'm going to watch every play of this from the start to the finish. And holy cow, <sighs> going to need some, uh, some surly after, after that. So Judd, you had one thing come off the board. You said Rick Spielman will be hired as an NFL general manager for this upcoming season. I think we can probably take this off the board now. Yep. Unfortunately, okay. unfortunately, again, I was hoping again that he would be named a GM, but it didn't happen. So you're right. He's kind of all over the place with media, man. He's doing like C- he's doing Sirius XM. He's doing CBS, their online digital stuff. He's got a TikTok account. He's doing that uh, 33rd team, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. He's doing a lot of good media. Yeah. It's good. Uh, I th- I think he's yeah, good. He's solid. He's, he's solid. good. Yeah. Okay. He's solid. 
We should get him on the show sometime. Or does he does he hate you or us enough to say no? He, mostly Judd. Do you guys not, you, you covered him pretty closely, right? Do you guys? Yeah, I don't know if he hates me. I mean, we we got along fine for a long time. So okay. yeah, that's a good question. I I don't know. He was he got so weird as a G- GM, but I don't think that was saying that's not going to help get him on the show. Yeah, Judd, that, that's okay? not calling him weird. Is not I think a, he grew. Way. I think he grew to hate the people that work in the business that he's now in. Okay. Except the national guys. You like them. Uh, we're going to, in, in lieu of things coming off the board, we're going to throw some things out there that are still on the board and get your thoughts on your predictions here. So you have a couple months left before this one comes off. You said Mike Zimmer will meet with Tom Pelissero specifically on why he should be an NFL head coach again. Yes. He's been awfully quiet. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. He hasn't talked. As far as I know, he has texted people, but he has not talked to anyone. Um, this goes back to, in fact, this is an old one, I think, because this goes back to when Tom went to Mike McCarthy's, I don't know if it was a ranch or what, where, where he had like a war room for how he was going to get that Dallas job. Yeah. Um, and spent like his year off, like just grinding film and trying to self-assess himself. I thought Zim might do the same. I I'm guessing this will not be right now. I think Mike's done. Like, I think he shows up here and I, I sure doesn't seem like he's going to get back in. Like not even as a coordinator. And, I mean, if he was, I think it would be. I think he would have thrown his hat in the ring for 2023, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it just taking feels two like, years off I mean, seems football's yeah. been his entire life. He's had a ton of stuff happen. I, yeah, I that's wouldn't the thing. be shocked at all if he just hangs it up. To be honest. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea, and it's tragic and so sad. But like, like the, the passing of his son, right? right? Like things like that are going to impact you. So see, those yeah, are I, all I, reasons why I think he still will coach because okay, if it's if that's your life, why would you want to give that up too? But yeah, I mean at this point, so all right, nothing came off the board for old Macadac here, but I do feel good about this one still. Now that Dalvin Cook's gone, I said no individual Vikings running back will have more than two hundred carries in two thousand twenty three. Yep, let's get that RBC baby running back by committee RBBC. <laughs> Get that thing rocking. Listeners, nothing came off the board. Declan, nothing came off the board. You you did say Hawkinson will get a contract extension before Hunter gets his contract extension. Why have we not really heard anything about a is, is that just going to quietly get done, the Hawkinson thing, at some point before the season? Unless I'm totally wrong about this, I think it's going to quietly get, get done at some point. I just don't know when. But, I mean, he, he was at all of the OTAs. Um. It just appears like no one's really concerned about that one. Yeah. Is there any way they would just let him, like if they don't want to pay him, you know, George Kittle money, would they just let him play out his contract and take a comp pick? Is there any way that that's a possibility? I think there's a better chance that Hawkinson himself will will work to get a deal done here that probably makes sense for both sides. I don't have any sense he's going to try to break the bank. I might be totally wrong about this, but... Every other contract situation got semi sort of addressed, right? Jefferson didn't yeah. show at OTAs. Hunter held out of mini camp. The Hawkinson one just seems to be like not talked about. So I, I don't think there's a problem there. Um, I, I It doesn't feel like there's the urgency that I probably would have expected back in March for this one to get done. Yeah, it'll. It sometimes this happens where it just all, all of a sudden Brian O'Neill has a new contract extension right. and whatever. So, okay, uh, with that, Declan is leading the 2023 completion percentage battle, 37% to my 35%. Judd at 33.3%, ahead of the listeners at 29.2. Old Mackinac has the most touchdowns with five to Judd and Declan's four apiece listeners with one. All time, Declan leads with a 35.5% completion percentage, less than 1% above Judd, 34.8. I'm at 32.5. Listeners way back there at 23.6 all-time completions. They are, uh, they're just a, a gunslinging, <laughs> inaccurate quarterback hunting for touchdowns down the field. Uh, I have 38 touchdowns. Listeners, 28. Declan, 27. Judd with 22. All right, let's get him in here. Our guest listener predictor, Justin in Rochester. Making How you guys his doing? return. Hey, tell Look the audience that. if they want to hear you sling Vikings takes, tell them about your podcast. 
Uh, my YouTube channel is Purple and Gold for Days. Purple and Gold for Days. My last name is Day, so I had to get the name Days in there somehow. Purple and Gold. You wow. guys get the bit. Uh, thank you guys for all the encouragement that you uh, and feedback you guys have given me over the years. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, let's rock this out. Let's get it. All right, so you know how this works. We're going to start with Justin over to Judd, Declan back to me. Three trips around the room here. And uh, Justin, you're under center first, so why don't, you, why don't you fire away? This Daniil Hunter situation, whether you want to put it on him and his agent for taking a bad deal, the previous regime probably making him promises, write this down, Daniil Hunter has played his last game with the Minnesota Vikings. He will not be back. Now, I'm saying it in that he won't play for this team this season. That way I don't deadline myself to he has to be cut or traded by week one. He might still be on the roster holding out, but he will not play for this team. My sources tell me that the damage is beyond repair, that uh, he's just had enough. So are you? So do you think you think it's him and his camp are just kind of done with the Vikings is kind of it? Or do you think it's the Vikings drawing a line and saying, all right, we like you, but... Come on, I think it's a little bit of both. I think the Vikings showed you something. When's the last time an NFL team offered to give a player more money without giving them an extension? Usually they're asking for players to give money back. So the fact that they offered him money but didn't offer him an extension that he was willing to take says, well, yeah, we like you and we want you for this year, but you know he doesn't fit the crazy mold of 26 or less. He's going to be 29 here pretty quick. Um, and I think at this point that Daniel was probably insulted by, oh, you want to give me more money for now, but you don't want to extend me beyond this year. So that's that's just what I'm gleaming. I got, I got a screenshot for someone. I got aggregated on heavy.com after I said Daniel <laughs> Hunter's uh, camp is playing hardball. Uh, my a, a relative texted me a couple of days ago. Is, it, is this true? Did you did you really say this? And I was like, I, well, I did say it, but I, <laughs> I, I joined the aggregation train on Purple Daily and wow. Mackie and Judd. Heavy. When you become heavy, 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 heavy. you are a list, what, man. What site exactly? What what's their forte? They, they aggregate everything for all. Like there's a local. Uh, so, it sounds like it could L. be a very Dude, we, we've not definitely safe used, work website. But we've, we've, we've used we've rumors used from them for reckless okay. speculation Thursday okay. before. Classic. Well, then they're official. If you guys, have used yeah, them. if we've go. used them, they are. They are top notch. There's the I just New York want to Times. See here. So heavy.com. Here we go. Oh, this is great. This is from June 14th. Oh, this is great. Uh, past grudge a hurdle in Vikings Daniil Hunter contract talks. Insider says. Here we go. Hunter's agent could be playing some serious hardball after he negotiated the Stars' last deal that left Hunter significantly underpaid, <sighs> according to Scornorth's Declan Goff. <laughs> Quote. I was told the agent for Daniil Hunter is playing some serious hardball, making negotiations a little more difficult than was anticipated, Goff said on June 13th. KSTP's Darren Wolfson added, Minnesota is willing to bump Hunter's pay significantly. Um, and then it goes into like where he ranks sort of among other players with a link to the oh scoop God. episode from that week. Look at you guys. Doogie and our Declan are heavy.com insiders and heavy.com famous. Our ne- Let me be goal. clear. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Should be to get something off of write that down aggregated. That <laughs> yes. would be that would be the I zenith of success is if they aggregated <laughs> a write that down prediction. It's not very often that we'll say this, but I hope I'm wrong because I'd love to see Hunter with Flores. I mean, he got 10 and a half sacks with Donna Shell's defense and. Where else are you going to get pass rush from? But uh, yeah. I, I hope I'm wrong. Let's just say it that way. Oh, uh, re- this reminded me when Justin brought up Donna Shell. I forgot to bring this up on the historical pie chart, the 2004 Vikings beating the Packers in the playoffs thing. So they did like a 30 second blurb on the broadcast about how Donatel got fired by the Packers after the previous season. And Judd, you covered him that season. Yep. But yep. the defense hasn't really improved much since Donatel left. Oh. And so. <laughs> he gets the last laugh. Anyhow, all right. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be great if like heavy.com could pick up one of our four item parlays as <laughs> as an aggregated report. But yeah, we'll see. that would be the, just down. the height of success right there for write that down. All be. right, write this down. Um, and this is referencing what happened actually last weekend in a USFL game where a, oh. a terrible call was reversed and gotten right through the use of something that the National Football League does not use. The NFL will approve the use of the sky judge before the 2024-2024 season. 
So there was no. a face mask call in, I believe it was the Michigan Pittsburgh game that, that the play resulted in a touchdown that was nullified by a face mask call, which was a totally missed call. Like it was just butchered. Sky judge calls down says, Hey, you got that call wrong. Let's get this right. Yeah. And so the touchdown stood because they got the call, right? The simplicity and easiness with, with which that worked because somebody up in a calm environment who could see the play it makes too much sense. So I think the I think that the National Football League, which has gone to school off a lot of stuff done by XFL, USFL things, mm-hmm. I think they're going to institute this for 2024. Okay, the Sky Judge will be in the mix. All right, Dex. All right, well let, let's uh, let's grab that bat or that club out of the bag and make a similar prediction here. I'll make a USFL prediction. We got the championship game this weekend. Oh, guy couldn't let's make one more well. couldn't make one more XFL prediction <laughs> to get old Macadax, uh point, but here In we go fact, with the USFL. The spread has moved up a half a point since uh, last night when I initially did my research. Let me make sure to check the spread as I did the prediction on like someone on the show. Thanks, uh, Thanks, write this down: <laughs> the Stallions beat the Maulers, who are favorites, and they cover the seven point spread. So the Stallions beat the Maulers. They cover the seven-point spread. And where are we at? Is this is the cha- is this the championship game? I believe so. Yep. Oh wow! So I US the so. USFL Bowl I kind of snuck so. up on us. I believe so. Actually, I can't say for certain if it is the championship. Game. I'm pretty sure it's the championship game. <laughs> it's a game. It's a football yep. game being played by players. Write this down. Okay, write this down. Kirk Cousins will be a San Francisco 49er by. May 1st of 2024. I saw Florio getting all the credit for speculating on that, but we all know we all know where that actually originated Heavy. from. Heavy.com, it originated yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> it makes too much sense. He at this point there's really no reason for him not to hit the open market unless the Vikings come in with a really nice lucrative probably 3-year contract between now and you know, March of next year, but at this point you're close enough. If you're Kirk, go explore the market. And right now, the 49ers are shaping up in the same way that they've been the last few years, which is a really good roster with a huge question mark at quarterback and probably a quick playoff exit of some kind. And they'll be looking for that final piece of stability at quarterback. And finally, Kirk and Kyle Shanahan can reunite for the first time in almost a decade. So write this down. Kirk will be a San Francisco 49er. All right, back. This to is Justin in the fantasy football draft who just got sniped by uh, Phil uh, taking uh, my Kirk Cousin prediction. So we'll <laughs> go with number three here now, and I'll have to think of something on the fly. Well, you can down. you can add to it if you want to. Mm-hmm. You can do the same prediction. You have to just you have to add something to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll think of something here. I'll go with number three for right now. So write this down: the Green Bay Packers will win no more than six games this season. That's Ooh. item number one. Number two: the Vikings will sweep the Packers. And their point differential in those two victories will be at least 28 points. So you are not buying Jordan Love stock, obviously. Lightning rarely strikes twice in the same spot. Is sure ain't going to strike a third time. Jordan Love, he well he's not it. He's he's not it. Yeah. Well put. And Agreed. thank God too, by the way. Yes. It, they need to be to they end. need to be taken back to the Stone Age, and they need to know what it's like to not have a Hall of Fame quarterback. There's a generation and a half of Packer fans that don't even know what it is to not have a Hall of Fame quarterback. It's time. They, they deserve Lynn Dickey. That's what they yes. deserve. Give them they Lynn deserve. Dickey. For 30 years in the wilderness, bring it back, ladies and gentlemen. It is funny to think about. You've you've always just, there's been like a year here or there where, you know, Favre has a bad year or Rodgers gets hurt where they win like six games. I think there's maybe three of those in 30 years. But to think about the Packers as a bottom-feeding team, drafting in the top 10 for like five or six years it's almost unfathomable although judd grew up on that i right? grew i grew up garbage. on the packers sucking they were so yeah. bad but it's been so long since that's been like none of n- none of the other three of us remember anything other than like brett Favre in the early night i, I remember one year of the magic man don mccowski yes i had a figurine i had a bunch of football figurines yeah. and he was one of them Those were that's cool. pretty much it so all right uh back to Write this down to Judley here. All right. I thought I thought I had predicted this because I, I have spoken pretty highly of my expectations, but I went back and did a search and couldn't find it. So write this down. Sean Payton will be named the coach of the year in the National Football League for 2023. Yeah. Um, I just I'm very bullish on the Broncos being one of those teams that's going to 
well, I guess surprise, but like they're just going to fulfill the expectations that probably existed before Hackett got the job and completely d- destroyed things. It sounds like Russ has gotten himself in really good shape this time too. I guess he came in a little bit oh. fat and happy to hmm. the season last year. Too many red carpet buffets. Yeah. Before last he, season. He looks he looks like a guy who could pack on pounds. Mr. Yeah, Unlimited. Yeah. Mr. Unlimited. Yeah. It's I, I feel like the, like the biggest thing to repair just in addition to Russ, can he play football and run around? Is didn't his teammates kind of hate him at the end of last season? Yes. The offensive line well, and there's all these like anonymous yeah. sources and stuff. That that whole thing though, like like you needed a coach who basically could crack down. Like we literally f- found out, Phil, as as you said, Russ's guru, who was a radio guy in Seattle, was in the yeah. building. All, like Tom Brady's the only guy who's ever been allowed that. I think. Yeah. Right. It to is. Have your guy just there. So, like, I mean, Nathaniel Hackett probably should have got George Payton fired. And George Payton still has kind of a job there. Is he technically yeah. still the GM? But yeah. But he wasn't making all the de- he didn't like make the Correct. decision to hire Sean Payton, right? And he wasn't hired by the, the people that now own the Broncos. So I firmly expect he'll get blown out at some point. Maybe him and Rick can do a podcast together. <laughs> Don't lie. I mean, if they want to join Purple Daily, write that down. It's very. We wouldn't turn that down. I think they'd ask for way too much for what what we would actually get from them, though. My guess is Purple Daily on draft and trenches with Boone would be more popular than like George Payton, but it would be fun to get those. But guys I, I would need Rick there. and George to tell stories and like open up all on all types of things. I would say, here's the deal. You're going to sign a contract. You're going to be well compensated, but you, w- I want an agreement. You will never work again because if you want to work again in the, the league, you, you can't won't have a good podcast. Alienate. Yeah. Exactly. You have to alienate somebody on every show. We needed to throw a lot of people under the bus here, and so you have to quick, commit quick. commit to your media career. Is rapid what fire, to. rapid fire, boom! I love it. <laughs> All right, Dex. Write that down. All right, uh, Mackie. I wonder if you have a prediction on this, but the match is this weekend or this week. I think it's tomorrow between mm-hmm. Steph and Clay and Mahomes and Kelsey. Mm-hmm. Uh, so write this down, Steph and Clay, and it's different rules this year. It's match play uh, for yeah. the twelve hole format, so it's a little different. But write this down. Steph and Clay beat Mahomes and Kelsey, and at no point in the match will Mahomes and Kelsey lead at any point. Oh, okay. They will not. They will not lead at any point in the match. So we I know Mahomes can golf a little bit. We haven't seen. So we're assuming Kelsey can golf. Is that uh, apparently Mahomes said, uh, which is not always a good thing, that Kelsey can hit the absolute bleep out of the ball, <laughs> but it doesn't go straight. Um, okay. And Steph's obviously the best <laughs> golfer of the four. Yeah. Uh, so I think Steph just kind of carries them. Clay has to be, you know, the the Declan Goff of the four man scramble. Just make one putt in the group, and you you've done your job for the day. Just rely on Steph. <laughs> Kelsey's going to be hammered by the end of that thing, too. By the way, mm-hmm. his brother was He'll like, be hammered by halftime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think they've reduced it to twelve holes now. Too the last couple versions, they yeah, they 12. used to do like eighteen so, holes. It takes five well, hours. Now they've done like tw- they're done like twelve. Holes. Even if they uh, get to the seven, like if Steph and Clay beat them seven straight holes, the the game's over. So like yeah. this could even be over very quickly, which I could see happening too. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make a, an MVP prediction here. Write that down. Write this down. I think this is the year that uh, Joey Burrow gets his first NFL MVP award. So I just want to I want to get out in front. He was fourth last year. And then let me see here. What's did he did he chart? Uh, just want to make sure I'm not. I think he was fourth last year. Yeah, he had thirty some touch. He had didn't he throw four picks in the first week too, which kind of he set was him back terrible for a while. The first two games, I think, if I remember right. Well, the Bengals weren't good. They were well, yeah, because he he had his appendix out in training camp. Yeah, came back and played the first game. I think he threw you like and, four picks against you Pittsburgh and Joe Burrow. in week one. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I came back strong for week one. You did. You did. You came back stronger. That's true. I'm tougher mentally than most yeah. folks know. You know, Joe Burrow's tough. I'm tougher mentally. You are pretty tough mentally. I he mean, a lot of people don't like me. There. I'm not a favorite. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I mean, I'm not, I know it's going to shock you, but there's a lot of people that don't like me. And most of them are on Twitter. <laughs> You're sports I, I, dad, not Twitter. sports friends. Exactly I'm right. Friend. That's what I dad. always say. I'm not, you know, my, my being sports dad does not mean that I'm your friend. It means I have to tell the truth. <laughs> exactly right. Even if you don't want to hear it. Sometimes I have to take away the sports keys, and it's not easy. 
Do you have a jar for your sports therapy sessions? And you put your, Come on, put your sports keys in the sports jar. No, the sports son, you know, does something. I got to take away the keys. <laughs> uh, do, do, do your sports sons ever like lash out behind your back? Have you ever found out that they're lash invite, out inv- back. inviting like other fans in? Uh, they you know, lash out on Twitter. I had a twins take. His face. Oh my god! Yeah, exactly. I had a twins take on Twitter a couple nights ago and discussed that I was just the lashing out at me was incredible. Yeah, there's a man. There's just a lot of feisty twins fans out there that, that I got. I got into. I, I just tweeted out like the Emilio Pagan stats about like here's how he is in close games versus non close games. In a debate raged the other night over whether coming into a game with a runner on second base down by one in like the seventh or eighth inning is high leverage or not. Well, like even though he gave up a bomb, technically it wasn't a high leverage situation. It's like, what are you even arguing? Lord help what, us. Like, what is your, you've lost sight of the argument if you are defending Emilio Pagan. Anyways, all right, back to uh, Justin in Rochester here <laughs> for your third and well, final prediction. Side note, it, it's like what you were talking about with the media talking about fan bases or teams that need championships more than anything else. The fact that any Minnesota sports team wasn't on that list is beyond ridiculous because that's the funny thing is you could say that about all four of our men's sports teams between the Vikings, Twins, Wolves, and Wild. They fit the category every which way. Mm -hmm. I I found it hilarious when the the Milwaukee Bucks won their championship. ESPN had this graphic about how the city of Milwaukee hasn't won a championship for 30 years, as if the Packers don't count, (laughs) for crying out loud. Right. There's this other town like an hour up the road there (laughs) that all of those Bucks fans worship that team too. So Yeah, it's ridiculous. (laughs) Write this down. The Vikings will win this division. They will win their wild card round, and they will lose in the divisional round of the playoffs by at least 10 points and it will be Kirk Cousins final game as a Minnesota Viking wow look at that parlay that's great stuff heavy.com that's not a prediction that's a report from Justin in Rochester (laughs) throwing fastballs man buzzing them in (laughs) so uh well since you've got this uh life-changing platform here on Purple Daily again Justin is there anyone in your life you'd like to thank that brought you to this pinnacle moment well by the by the way i'd like to by thank tyler. the way i'd like to thank tyler and dave at first and scold vikings first and scold for allowing me to become part of their podcast network as well said it earlier thank you to nice. you guys for all the encouragement and feedback that you've given me thank you for all of the vikings fans and the vikings community that show up on our live streams like uh purple daily as well as mine uh that show out even in the dog days of summer where we're just making stuff to entertain you guys. The support, that's the one thing I've learned in the last seven months is how supportive uh, this Vikings fan base is uh, via the YouTube pages. So thank you, everybody. And uh, thanks again for having me, guys. Uh, Declan, hit me up anytime you need a pinch hitter. You got it, man. Amen. Justin in Rochester. Well, cheers again, I'm sure, at some point here. Take care, man. Have a good one, gentlemen. Purple and gold for days. Hit me up, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, go uh, click the subscribe button on Justin's YouTube channel. There's a lot of good Vikings content out there, and uh, it's fun to get guys like Justin on too and highlight them. So go support his channel and chirp him in the comment section yeah. just like you do for us if you want to. That's a terrible take. Before we get to uh, our three final predictions here, boys, let's shout out a couple of our friends, starting with Livia Judd, helping people lose a lot of weight across the Purple Daily listenership. They most definitely had, including me, a couple of years back. That picture on the left, well, that's a guy that was a little bit too chunky. The picture on the right, that's a guy that was toned and in great shape. And what's the difference? It is my friends at Livia Weight Control Centers who helped me drop 40 pounds a couple of years ago. And the most important thing is they're going to not only help you drop the weight, they're going to help you keep the weight off. And how would you like it if I told you that you could have be down 20 or more pounds in eight weeks and it's going to be free because Livia's offer right now, if you join now, is eight weeks for free. And yes, I said that you could drop 20 or more pounds in that time. It will be um, an experience that not only will help you drop the weight, but keep the weight off. 855-GO-LIVIA, livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A.com. Check them out. Start to lose that weight today. And while we're getting our lives in order here, uh, let's talk about AG1 as well. About six years ago, old Macadac discovered AG1 
through one of my favorite podcasts, the Tim Ferriss Show, actually, to be exact. And so it's kind of fun now to come full circle, like what, six, seven years later on this podcast and tell you guys about all the benefits, the 75 high quality ingredients that give you important daily nutrients. This has replaced a multivitamin for me. It helps with brain fog, like lifting it, not adding it. Uh, energy levels heightened, helps with gut health, and it just helps. It's it's nutritional insurance. So if you're not getting, you're on the on the go, on the fly, you're working and you're bouncing around, it's the summertime, um, one scoop of AG1 mixed with your water in the morning or maybe midday can be a huge, huge boost. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, AG1 is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash purple daily. That's drinkag1.com slash purple daily. Write it down. You like writing things down. Judd. All right, my third and final prediction. I'm actually going to do a callback to uh, one of our historical pie charts from th this week and give you a write that down that goes back to the show that we did on the uh, 1998 Thanksgiving Day game between the Vikings and Cowboys. Within the first eight games of the season for the Vikings, we will have one flea flicker go for a touchdown. Oh, the Vikings. Were. Yes. So within the first eight games, Kevin O'Connell is going to call for a Cousins. Hands off to Madison. Madison pitches the ball back to Cousins. Addison is breaking down the field. Loose catches the ball. Touchdown. Is that last part off the record? Yeah, the last part's off the record. I'm just going to okay. go with Flea Flicker for a touchdown. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it goes like to the – does it have to go to the running back? Like could they do like a, some back and forth where it's like to JJ and then back to Kirk well, or something? Like does that still yeah. count as a Flea Flicker, right? It's got to be – it's got to be forward. Like a, a flea flicker would be a yeah. handoff going forward and then a yeah, pitch back, it. right? That's the yep. the definition. Yep. Or, yep. 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 So yes, it it can't. So it can't be a pass behind the line of scrimmage to Jefferson. Got it goes it. back to Kirk. That's not. I don't think that constitutes at all what what the true heart of the intention of the flea flicker is. Mm -hmm. But I love me a flea flicker, and I oh, want yeah. one. We talked about that. I want me. It's a great play, man. Like, I don't understand why you don't run five of them a game, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, play <laughs> play action works. So start, start going, start going like uh, playground if football. Offensive, if I were the offensive coordinator, I'd have a Tecmo Super Bowl playbook. Oh, Eight plays. Be, I'd run flea flicker every single, uh, every single possession. There'd be a flea flicker somewhere. Write this down. All right, Dex. All right, last one for me. So the cut down dates in training camp this year are a little different. So deadline to trim players on August 16th goes from 90 to 85 on August 23rd. It's 85 to 80. And then on August 30th, it's 80 to all the way to 53. So those are cut down dates. And I'm saying that because I want this prediction um, to make sense a little bit. So Jack pod Lesney, the kicker that the Vikings have brought in for potential competition with Greg Joseph, the rookie kicker, that was the UDFA write this down. Podlesny will be cut by the Vikings, but in the last round of cuts. So he has to be cut in the August 29th window. He has to survive the first two rounds, and then he will be cut in the third round. So if he's cut in the first two, or if he's even cut before then, this does not come, come to fruition. Or he wins the damn job, and I also don't get this point. But he will be cut by the Vikings and in the final rounds of training camp cuts. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to need Declan to take his headphones off. Oh, I love, next when, I love it when this down. happens. Yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to mute something here. One second, one second. Okay, no, we're fine. Hold on, hold on. We got time. All right, go ahead. All right, can you hear me? You're good? Okay. All right, so uh, we're doing these historical pie charts here, and yep. Declan, he's going to do the pie chart for the Minneapolis Miracle game. Yep. I think he's going to get tricky. Okay. Write this down. Yeah. He will not give Stefan Diggs. I will say this. He will not give Stefan Diggs the um, unanimous number one slice of pie. It'll either be tied for the biggest pie chart of uh, slice of pie for praise, or it won't be the top. Does that so make sense? So it has to be the biggest. So if he gets the biggest, if Diggs gets the biggest percentage, you're wrong. But besides that, you're. Yeah. But if he's, if he's tied for the biggest percentage or you. not, then I get the point. Okay. Okay, I think he's going to get that. tricky. I don't know if he's going to like Keenum or if there's going to be some other, some other force. But I'm going to say he gets tricky with the pie chart. He's going to give the biggest piece of pie to Pat Shermer. 
<laughs> oh, that could be it. Yep. Okay. All right, you can come back. Come on back, Dex. <laughs> when are we doing that one, by the way? Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. We'll, find, okay. we'll soon find okay. out. Okay. So I think it'll. it's not going to come off the board today, but it will come off the board before the end of the week, I hope. So okay. we'll see. All right. That's my plan. Don't, so walk Zip on it. eggshells everywhere you go. Zip Be nervous. It. Zip. <laughs> Zip. Are you drinking whiskey right now? No, it does look like whiskey. It's iced coffee. <laughs> That's pretty good, though. Just, take it. Just drinking some, yeah, scotch, and I get, some scotch on a Wednesday yeah. morning. And I get crap for what's gum, in my mug. No, I said I'm working from home today. You know, I, I guess it could be. You know. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, it's uh, Fourth of July weekend here. And, boy, if you are one of the lucky people that was proactively heading over to Power Lodge and Miller Marine. Locations, by the way, Power Lodge in Brainerd, Onamia, and Ramsey, and Miller Marine in St. Cloud, then you're going to have a heck of a weekend out on the water. Maybe you got into mm. one of these Benningtons. Maybe you got into a Tri-Tune. There's over 300 pontoons in stock for your throttle therapy, Judd. And that type of therapy is exactly what we need in the state when it because when it comes to our men's sports teams, they can drive us crazy. So we need to relax. We need to get out. We need to let some steam off. And that is exactly what you can do on your Bennington on a gorgeous Fourth of July weekend. I mean, come on. The one the one true win in this godforsaken town is you on a Bennington. Yes, powerlodge.com and Miller Marine. Dot com. Thank you for supporting all of our partners here. It helps keep this a 365-day-a-year Viking show, even in the dead Ooh. of the offseason. Daily Vikings Entertainment, Purple Daily. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.